G-men, hard-riding, fast-shooting, government secret service men of the Old West, working undercover on dangerous... The Cowboy G-men in Center Fire, starring Russell Hayden as Pat Gallagher and Jackie Coogan as Tony Crockett. In the summer of 1888, word spread across the nation that anthrax had broken out in California. Anthrax is a deadly fever capable of wiping out whole herds of livestock. With the threat of a nationwide spread of the disease, the government asked for an immediate emergency investigation for a quick solution to stop this killer of animals. There was no Bureau of Animal Industry in those days. Even the states had no official posts for the regulation of livestock. So federal authority turned to its one sure source of information, the Secret Service. Assigned to the job were agents Pat Gallagher and Stoney Crockett. government investigation begins on the California ranch of Jose Delgado and it begins with the activities of these two men John Vance a veterinarian and Laswell his assistant let's use the pinto get in and hold his hand Senor, put away that needle. Well, Senor Delgado. Si, Delgado. What are you two doing in my rancho? Well, we came out to see if uh, any of your horses had anthrax. Already you shoot my horse with a hypodermic needle. Why? This one looks kind of sick. This is a lie, Senor. This horse is clear-eyed and well. And I will tell you what you would do with the hypodermic needle. You would make him sick so you can frighten me about the others and make me pay much money to keep them well. Now, wait a minute, Delgado. You're talking out of turn. I've only begun to talk, senor. You had no right to touch the horse without my permission. You were going to town with me to see the sheriff. Now, get on your horses. Just as you say, senor Delgado. It'll be time to put my needle away. I think you better change your mind about this, Delgado. You don't know how close you are to being dead. We shall see, senor. Get on your horses. You can tell the alibi to the sheriff. Hey, Vance, his horse is headed towards the ranch house. No, he isn't. I did it. He's heading the other way. Yeah. We better get out of here. After we talk to Bat and I, we've got to make up for a lot of lost time, Stoney. Right. This was horse raising country, close to the Pacific Ocean. And Arroyo Grande was the center point of it all. Dr. Vance, don't seem to be here. No, I guess we'll have to wait, Stoney. 
Say, Pat, how much do you know about this anthrax? I don't know an awful lot, Stoney. But there's some reference books. Maybe we can find out something about it. Here's a book of information over here. Yeah, let me give it to us. Anthrax. Anthrax, A N. Uh, here it is. Anthrax, a highly infectious disease prevalent in marshy areas. Symptoms including restlessness, convulsions, and bleeding at the mouth. Get this, death can occur within three hours. Highly contagious. I'm looking for Doc Vance. We are too, but he don't seem to be around. You two are new in town, aren't you? That's right, we're government survey men. My name's Gallagher, and this is my partner, Crockett. Federal men? I'm Ned Broden. I run a ranch southeast of here. Need to see the vet. We're here to find out all about this epidemic. Anthrax fever? I sure hope someone finds out something about it, or we're in real trouble. Who says it's anthrax? The horse doctor, and he should know. Any of your animals sick? Not yet. But a friend of mine over Santa Paula Way has lost half his herd already. That's why I want the doctor to look at mine, before it's too late. Who's this friend of yours over Santa Paula Way? Clem Bowers, Broken Wire Ranch. Where did this first break out? On Bowers Ranch. Who discovered it? Doc Vance. And he's working like a madman, trying to stop it. I've been waiting for you. Hi, Broden. What can I do for you? I'd like you to come on out and take a look at those horses of mine. But I guess these government men would rather talk to you first. Government men? My name's Gallagher, Doctor. I'm Crockett. Hi. We're here to check on the anthrax epidemic. Well, unless you're veterinarians, there isn't much you can do about it, is there? No, I guess not, but we've got a report to make out. We'd like to ask you a few questions, if we may. I don't have much time, but go ahead. Have you had any rain lately, Doctor? No. No rain? Why? Well, it's my understanding that anthrax doesn't usually break out in dry areas. Are you sure this is anthrax? Of course I'm sure. Animals can get anthrax from breathing the dust. Yes, but that doesn't happen very often, does it, Dr. Vance? Have you had any uh, infections in cattle? Well, not yet that I know of, but there probably will be. I'm sorry, I haven't got any more time to waste talking to you. Come on, Broden, let's have a look at those horses of yours. Delgado's horse. That fool horse came into town. They can't prove we had anything to do with it. Whose horse you say this was? It belonged to Senior Jose Delgado. Well, then Senior Delgado might be in trouble. Yeah, somebody ought to backtrack with his horse right away. Not me. How about you fellas doing it? I've been feuding with Delgado for the past three years. His ranch is about three miles south. Any anthrax out there? Probably anthrax everywhere now. All right, we'll ride out and see if we can't find Senor Delgado. Come on, boy. We'll be back and see you later, Vance. A horse in the loose with saddle and bridle usually means one thing, trouble for the man who'd been riding the animal. Then as Tony and I rode towards the Delgado Ranch, we were looking for almost anything. But what we ran into came as a complete surprise. Who are you? 
Well, my name's Pat Gallagher, ma'am. This is my partner, Tony Crockett. Howdy, ma'am. And who may you be? I am Maria Carmelita Dolores Delgado. And unless you tell me the truth about my brother's horse, I will have my man shoot you both. I wouldn't advise that, Mr. Delgado. Might be a lot more than he can handle. We're government agents, ma'am. We came here to help you, not to fight with you. I asked you once more, where did you get my brother's horse? Still get the same answer. He came into town without a rider. And you were so kind as to bring him back here. How did you know where to come? Well, a man by the name of Broden told us where to bring the horse. Brody. I might have known he'd have something to do with this. Do you know what happened to your brother, Miss Delgado? He was murdered. Are you sure, Miss Delgado? Yes. His body is now in our house. Sorry to hear that, ma'am. We're both sorry. Where did it happen? Outside the corral. Would you please show us the exact spot? Yes. Follow me. This is where we found him. Lying face down in the dirt. How long ago? About four hours ago. Tonight we'll take him to the mission. Tomorrow we'll have the funeral. Hey, Pat. Look at these. Oh, you found something. What are they? Bullets? No, they're empty cartridges. They've been fired. What can you do with them? All shells are alike. Yes, ma'am, but not all guns. It's a 44, no? It's a 44, yes. It's got a square indentation mark on the percussion cap caused by the firing pin. Broden carries a 44 caliber pistol. Well, so do a lot of men, ma'am. It's noted for its accuracy. Yes, but Broden was always my brother's enemy. Louis, your gun. My horse, Louis. What are you going to do with that? The gun? I am going to use it to kill Broden. Well, we can't let you do that, Miss Delgado. This I will do alone. If many of us were to go, he would be ready. But a woman alone, he would not suspect. Listen, ma'am. You can't take the law in your own hands. I am going to. Don't try to stop me, or I will shoot you, too. Senorita means what she says, that Broden hadn't got a chance. Tony, yeah. Right into town, take these cartridges. Look up a gunsmith. See if he can tell you anything about the gun that fired him. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna try to catch that young lady. See if I can stop her from making that big mistake.
You killed my brother, Broken, and now I'm going to kill you. <laughs> government man or not, mister. I'm giving you and the girl about two minutes to get off my place. Go now and get some of my men. You hear when I get back, I'm going to give you some real trouble. I am sure Broden killed my brother, and I intend to see that he paid for it. You see this? Yes. It's round, isn't it? Round and pointed. The bullet that killed your brother came from a gun with a squared off firing pin. This is Broden's gun. He couldn't possibly have killed your brother. Yes, you are right. And I almost killed Broden. Do you have friends here in town? Well, yes, of course. Why don't you plan to stay with them until after you get over your brother's death? Let the law worry about who killed him. What are you going to do? Stay here? Yes. I'll stay here. I'll see you later. I told you to get out of here. I took a chance and stayed. There's your gun. I'd like to talk to you about this anthrax epidemic. What about it? You had a vet out here looking at your horses, didn't you? That's right. Any of them been sick? It's any of your business? Yes. What did Vance say was wrong with him? He had anthrax fever. He did. Where's the horse now? Right here in the corral. You mind if I have a look at him? You know anything about anthrax fever? A little. this horse been sick? Oh, he's been doing poorly for about a week or 10 days. Well, I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Broden. This horse does not have anthrax. What are you talking about? Just this. If he had anthrax, he'd have swollen to the neck, through his chest and down through the flanks. They get excited, froth at the mouth, go into convulsions. Pass is going to charge me $5,000 for inoculating my herd. That's $10 a head. Should have been $1 a horse. What excuse did he give you for the overcharge? He said he was running short on the serum. He was going to sell it to the highest bidder. Hey, maybe I'd better ride in town and have a talk with this Dr. Vance. You figure you need any help? We'd be glad to go along. No, thanks. I'll handle it my way. No hard feelings, Mr. Broden. Same thing myself, Doc. Them guys was out to Delgado's ranch today. So what? Could be they got some information from that Delgado girl. Well, could be, but how would she know anything about it unless... Yeah, unless that gunsmith remembers about that squared-off firing pin you got in your gun. Have you seen the other government man around? No. He ain't in town. Well, then I guess it looks like we better take care of this one in a hurry. Yeah. I guess we better. We met this morning. Yes, I remember. One of the government men. Are you carrying a gun? No, I'm not. I see. Well, then I'll have to search your place. For what reason? Well, I have every reason to believe 
that your gun killed Jose Delgado. Oh, okay. Did uh, you kill him, Vance? Why, of course not. Well, I'll still have to search the place. Suppose I don't let you. Oh, yes, you'll let me, Doctor. Now, just stand still. I'll go ahead and... Don't let him have it now, Vance. No, I don't want this man to die with a bullet wound. That's very interesting. How do you want me to die? I'm going to put you out of the way with anthrax. Anthrax? Can you do that fast enough, Doc? Well, the formula I've prepared for him, it'll only take a few minutes. Sit him down over there. I think I will. Anthrax is just as deadly to humans as it is to animals. Deadlier. And what about the gunsmith? He knows about your gun and he'll talk. He's a pretty old man. He'll probably die of anthrax, too. Well, I've seen a lot of tough ones, but you two are the worst. All right, Mr. Crockett. Let's see if you can take your medicine. I wonder who that is. Somebody's come on a horse fast. Yeah, take the needle. I give you the signal, inject it. Don't make any wrong moves, Gallagher. That's anthrax culture in the hypo. One jab of the needle and Crockett will be dead in a few minutes. So that's how the anthrax epidemic started. You plan on charging fancy prices for inoculating horses that didn't have it. I think you probably got a pretty good case there, Gallagher. Maybe we can make a deal. Kind of a deal. If you want your partner to stay alive, give us 24 hours to get out of town. I'll take your word for it. 24 hours? So you want to make a deal? All right. We'll make a deal. And this is it. There's still no deal. You're under arrest. Here, Stoney. You still think you're top dog, don't you, Gallagher? But you don't know how close you are to being dead. Well, I've got to warn you, Vance. Anything you might say will be used against you. Hold it, you! It's still no deal, Vance. <laughs> So well, that's how he did it, eh? Taped back the trigger so they could fire with a hammer. Pretty close, wasn't it, Pat? Pure dynamite, Stoney. Those fellows actually infected some of the horses with anthrax, so I could charge a big price for curing them. You know, if we hadn't stopped this epidemic, it may have spread from border to border. I make a motion, Pat, that every state should have an official veterinarian to prevent things like this. <laughs> that's a good idea, and I second it. You know, you're going to be laid up for quite a while, Pat. That's tough luck. I will take good care of you, Senor Gallagher. <laughs> you know, when it comes to women, Pat, you don't know what tough luck means. And that's for sure. See, si, Senor, that's for sure. <laughs>